the National Student Leadership Forum was something that I had never really heard about um, before. I was nominated to go by my boss at the time, Linda Wilkes, from the Transition Success Team. Fantastic. Yeah, so I had never heard of it and she just told me, you know, it's a leadership forum in Canberra, you'd be great to go, why not try? And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go along. <laughs> um, so I, a few months later I got an email from Vice Chancellor who said, you've been selected to go. I'm like, yay. <laughs> um, what did you have to do in order to apply for it? Did you have to write something or...? Yeah, so the process was basically, it's an application process where you have to get nominated to be selected. Mm -hmm. So um, when I got nominated, I had to sort of provide a, um, like a few paragraphs on why, how I'm involved in the community, why I want to be more involved in the community and that sort of thing. Yeah. And then through that, the vice chancellor would choose who would go and then sponsor them and that sort of thing. Great. So yeah, yeah, and that's what happened after that. And sort of once you've been selected by your vice chancellor, you're not really guaranteed to get into the forum. You've got right. to be selected by the people at the forum to get into it. Ah, oh, how does that work? Yeah, so I think they sort of look at, you know, what you've done in the community, um, how you're involved in that sort of thing and your leadership potential, I guess. Um, Is this all from what you wrote? And what what your nominee wrote? Yes. Your nominator wrote. It's all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to go to an interview or anything. No, no. nothing like that. Okay. But um yeah, so I'm not really too yeah. much more information about yeah, that, but that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, so that's sort of what happened. Yeah. Um what was the next So so you, <laughs> There's another part. you went through this process, you lodged your application, you were nominated, mm -hmm. Vice Chancellor invited you your application to go to the forum yes. committee. Mm. Forum committee, what did they do with it? Um, well, I'm not sure what they did. <laughs> they <laughs> they looked said, at it across a range of other applications, I'd I guess. assume so, yeah. yeah. And they basically just chose... There was 220 students who went through throughout Australia and some international locations. So it was sort of like a big thing. To be, I was like very surprised that I even got selected to right. go. So it's a national committee. It is, is yes. It, is it government funded? It's I uh, no, I don't think it's government funded. I do know it operates throughout a number of different like countries throughout the world. Yeah. Like there's a, a international an international um sort of organization. Yeah. Um there's one in America, there's one in New Zealand and they sort of do different forums for students Great. across the world. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> so after that grueling process, yeah. <laughs> Which, you yeah. got a letter in the mail or an email or something. I got an email, yeah. yeah, saying you've been sponsored by your vice chancellor to attend, which was lovely. <laughs> wow. Yes, got to spend four days at the Hyatt and go to Parliament House in Sydney. In the Canberra. In Canberra. Sorry, I forgot that part. Okay. Okay. So the the leadership forum was held in Canberra. Yes, it was. Yeah, and then you attended the four day. Four day event, a massive four day event, a very sort of um. Very life changing, very sort of put into everything into perspective event. It definitely was. Um, I think the main thing that I really got from it was this idea that we all have the opportunity to sort of change the world if we really want to, wow. and that using the idea behind, you know, using our values, using our faith as a means of being effective leaders yes. in the community, that's what the idea was really about because it was a form on faith and values and how you use those in leadership positions. How was that message delivered? So there were forums, were there discussion yep. groups, workshops, those yeah. sorts of things? Um, yeah, there was many different ways they did that yeah. actually. We had um, different seminars, um, so there was actually a lot of keynote addresses from very, very prestigious people. We had Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott. Peter Garrett, those sort of politicians. Wow, high level. <laughs> yeah, high it was yeah. at Parliament House as well. So <laughs> it was great. We had um, the Army Generals address us at War Memorial. Um, yeah, we had a number of other um, really lovely like charity workers and other really successful people in the corporate world mm -hmm. come and talk to us. One of the people that really stood out to me, her name's Ronnie Khan, um, and she operates a charitable organisation called Oz Harvest. Um, and she really spoke to us about her journey in being, you know, starting off having, you know, a business idea and developing it into this big charitable organisation that's helping so many people at the moment. So that really, really inspired me. It was something that really sat with me really, really strongly. So education is something that you find really empowering. I definitely do. Yeah, I think yeah. it's definitely something that's a shame that not everyone in the world has the opportunity to access. Yeah. And that's something that I really would like to address if I do become a leader or when I do become a leader yeah. to make it more accessible to others. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like it was a really interesting conference. You had some really inspiring speakers. What about the other delegates or the other people there? How did, how did you find that? 
Um, to be honest, that was probably one of the most special things that we did interacting with the other delegates um, because the forum itself, we were actually broken up into small groups um, and in that small group there's about um, seven or eight delegates in each group and there was also three um, facilitators and they'd been to the forum before, they'd been organising it and so they knew everything that was happening. And one of the things that we did in those small groups was we shared our stories. Mm -hmm. um, and our stories was basically you go through everything that's ever happened to you in your entire life. You get to completely open up to this small group of people who essentially become your family at the end of the forum. Wow. It's the most empowering thing. Yeah. It's insanely good. But um, just through hearing their stories and interacting with all these completely different people from across Australia, you really come to appreciate the different types of people there are in the world and how you can't judge someone just based on face value, how you've got to really look at who they are as a person from the inside and what they've been through and it was just amazing. It sounds like it was really, um, it opened you up to a whole range of different ways of seeing Oh uh, yeah. Um, people in your group where what kind of backgrounds were they from um people there's completely different backgrounds mm -hmm. um people who'd been you know they'd been born overseas they'd come to australia you know um we had gay people in our group um who else does a oh, person from france who just you know been traveling around australia who didn't you know know much english but regardless of the backgrounds or the you know the ways in which people were living their lives we all just bonded so so much and it just we just turned into this big family at the end of the forum and that's why it was so sad to go home to you know back to reality <laughs> but you know we've stayed in contact and just yeah it's great to have a support network like that terrific so you've got ongoing contact with yes. the people you you met and mm -hmm. you got on with you got exposure to a range of different outlooks or perspectives from mm -hmm. different points of view yes um, these young people um so it sounds like it was all in all it was a really inspiring opportunity it and was. as a as a career challenge a really great way to build some uh a sense of hope for the future mm -hmm. what else do you think you've walked away with from that conference that will be beneficial to your career in the future yeah i think what i've really walked away with is this idea that especially for my career challenge, being a leader, is that you have to be willing to serve others before you serve yourself and your own self, I guess, egotistic needs in that, in that perspective. So really sort of looking at the charitable causes that there are in the community or sort of even just sort of stepping back and volunteering in the community, not just trying to be a leader through achieving, you know, success or company profits or something like that, but leading from the actions that you do in the community. And that's something I really did take away and I'm planning to volunteer in the community as a result from that. <laughs> that that's a really really insightful uh, thing to get from something like this because yeah. the understanding that leadership is not necessarily about uh, being up the top. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you lead from underneath in That's a way, exactly by, right. By helping people along their path, supporting that's, and serving them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Servant leadership we called it at the forum and that's um, exactly what they tried to instill in us. So yeah. Very, very, very empowering. <laughs> I mean this is really interesting because I think this would be whether we'll use this on the video or not. So, um, so this concept of servant leadership, mm -hmm. um, can you say a little bit more about what that means? Is it like yeah. a, it's a, it's a well-known concept? Um, I don't, I personally don't think it is a very well-known mm. concept because I had never heard of it before even attending the forum. Yeah. It actually sort of goes right back into the Bible when Jesus was sort of talking about it to his followers. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> but it's sort of in like the forum, it really sort of, what the idea of it was, as I said, it's been leading not from the top of a position but it's leading from below and the actions that you do to others so one of the things you know they even said even if it's as simple as you know saying something nice to someone or just going and getting them a coffee or just being a person who's really sort of i guess kind to people and not just serving yourself and serving others instead of being so focused on yourself and that's yeah that's the whole concept behind servant leadership sounds yeah. fantastic do you think that, how do you think that rubs off on people? How do you think that becomes leadership in the community? So, um, okay, yeah, so I think with the idea of servant leadership, I think in the community it's more like um, people being, who embrace the concept of servant leadership will go out into the community and actually identify what things are happening around them that they've ignored maybe, but they could have done something about. So I think, you know, if there's charities that you've noticed in your community or even, you know, oh, I've got an elderly neighbour, why don't I see if they've got something they need me to do? It's just identifying what's in your community and what you can do to help the situation because there's always something. Like, 
that's one of the things I also recognise. There's just so many things that I've been so oblivious to yeah. that I really should have taken more notice of and help out in. So, so it's kind of opened your eyes to a whole lot oh, of possibilities. Completely. And in the future, when you see yourself as, you know, the CEO of your own company, yeah. how do you think that concept will translate into the way you do business? Yeah, I definitely, well, I personally think it'll be very, very detrimental to the way I, to which I run my business. Yeah. Um, I think I'll, what I'll do is I will develop a pro an approach that sort of focuses not on me trying to sort of get, you know, I want to get the most money, I want to be the most successful business, but I want to be known as a business that's ready to put itself out to help others, that's really making a difference in people's lives. You know, whether it's providing, you know, healthy food for people to eat or consume or, you know, educating small children, because what I really want to do is work in the health and fitness sort of industry um, yeah but I want my business to be sort of seen as a business that's helping others to achieve goals that they want to achieve or bettering their quality of life and I think being a servant leader means that you are doing something like that yeah. helping others to reach their goals helping others to see that you know there's help for them out there sort of thing so yeah so it's more than just making a profit at the end of the day exactly you're producing a product or a service that you know is providing a social benefit as well definitely and your sense of satisfaction is not just in looking at your bottom line mm -hmm. it's in seeing the outcome out That's there in the community a hundred percent yes Fantastic. <laughs>